Hey! Howdy, I'm here! Welcome to part two of my new North series. The North 6.1 with Iron Man Mars. Last we left off, we finally survived attempt 100 million of starting this freakishly difficult map. Now, this town is called U-Town for a reason. Because you decide what's going to happen here. Now, the first request was from Sonya MC. Thank you for replying to my video, Sonya. It's good to have you on my channel. Now, you wanted Marines and Thelly to have a bit of a story. I mean, we are playing Iron Man with real-time aging, so we will be connected to Marine and Thelly for a while. So, yes. I will attempt to make this episode a bit more story-like, right? Okay, here we go. In a land far, far away, there lived an Adam and an Eve. They weren't called Adam and Eve, of course. They were called Marion and Eve. Nineteen and seventeen years old, or young, or however you wanna it, honestly. They had finally built themselves a house. Because, most people don't know this, they had been banished. Banished to a soul forsaken place. Nobody here, just the two of them. They had been very, very bad in the past. They were criminals. These criminals have been brought to justice, and their sentence was banishment. Now it is around the colonial times, and they have been given just a smidge of food and barely some clothes. And they are now surviving on their own. After much difficulty, they built a wooden hut, a small stockpile. They have made a fishing area. And are now looking to get some food and warmth. At the moment, with only 11 pieces of firewood left, they were warm for now. There was, however, an issue. The issue was food. There was nothing, and I mean nothing, worth eating in their possession at the moment. Now at this point, Marion was fishing bravely for his wife to see if he could get some food on the table, but he was being very, very unhappy. Well, he had been banished after all. Now Sally, on the other hand, she is working as well, but she has decided to build stuff, maybe even gather stuff. Let's see what they are gathering. Alright. So they need food. Wild food. And food is over here. So let Sally collect some meat. And hopefully don't die. Because otherwise this mission will be very short. Sally the laborer slowly gathering food as her husband brings home a fresh batch of fish trout to be precise added to the blueberries they form a proper meal happiness has been restored partly because of this food happiness and food kind of go hand in hand when you're all alone in the wild like this now, of course, they would have to have some steady stream of food and firewood. And there is no better way to combine these two than to make a gatherer's hut. The gatherer's hut gets some food and some firewood. Now, I was wondering, did I already build one? No, I did not. Alright, 
This gatherer's hut really doesn't... Oh yeah, it does have a green ring. You see that? To the left. So let's see if we can get them some food. Or at least a place to gather. For now, we will put it... Uh, it's only a small ring. So let's just put it right next to their own house. There we go. Quietly, they counted up their stone and logs and figured out, well, we've got plenty, so let's build it. Astheli, the strong wife, set off to build this house after collecting her local wild foods. Marion returned to his fishing spot and got more trout so they could eat even more. Still having some firewood, they were not really cold, so they are. So they were slowly building up their house. Well, their area actually, because they had to live here for eternity. I mean, at least until they died. The small bag in front of their house was used as a sort of gathering place for their food tools luckily even though they were banished they did get a few tools and herbs to help in rebuilding their own lives all alone somewhere else now Marion had become quite a fisherman so he was happily going off to the side fishing for stuff Deli decided, no, no more food. I am not gonna gather any more wild foods. It is time to build this gatherer shelter. So she picked up her tool and she started carting all the material she needed to the gatherer shelter. After taking a small break, of course. It is important to rest. As Marion returned with even more tr trout, he decided that's going to be enough for today. Drop this fishing pole and decided to help Thelly build. The materials were gathered in the gathering shelter, as Thelly was nowhere to be found to be seen. Seems like her husband forgot some trout at the fishing spot and she picked it up. The thoughtful wife she is. Her husband, meanwhile carrying the heavy logs and stone. Wow, that's a lot of stone and trout to carry on your back. So yes. All the materials had been gone. The bag was full, stuffed with food and herbs and tools. And now they needed to build this gardener shelter. After picking up the last few bits of food from the wilds that they set out to gather earlier, they finally decided to build their house. They only needed two more logs. Oh, but they miscalculated. There were not enough logs to actually build the shelter. They decided to harvest a few more. Taking out their trusty axes, they went to the forest and started chopping down some trees. One even crashed into their house. Luckily, their roof was sturdy enough to resist the blow. As the trees fell, they gathered the wood for their gathering shelter to be built. Slowly but surely, stability was happening. Firewood was still an issue, which would be sorted out later, near the chopping block. The foundation of the gathering shelter laid, they set off to building. 
Marion decided to chop some wood so that they could stay warm during winter, which was fast approaching. While Thally picked up a saw, a hammer and some nails and started building the garden or shelter. As she had been a builder in the past, this was no issue for her. While Marion was clearly struggling to get enough firewood, because his specialty was not physical labor, he used to be an accountant. Yes, he laundered money. That was his crime. For that he was banished, because it was a very poor community that he laundered in. And they had almost no money at all. So he was, con he was deemed a very bad, bad person. Needing frequent breaks, he drifted off into the forest, just so he could catch a few seas before carrying on and switching jobs, because Mary uh, Thally knew my husband is a terrible, terrible wood chopper. She decided to pick up the job and let Marion hammer in the last few nails of the building. Slowly but surely, the building was done. After having worked so hard, they decided to immediately employ it and see if they could gather some materials. Marion decided, I'll do the gathering. I'm good at picking herbs, but first I still need to catch some Z's. After having chopped a few pieces of firewood, Marion and Thelly decided that it was now time to focus on more storage. Their bag was getting full so easily, it's about time they had some proper storage. So they decided, hmm. Well, they had to decide on a storage shed, a storehouse, or even some tool sheds, but those were way up the uh, up, up the food chain, I was about to say, but up the building chain. I mean, a simple storage shed, just a few planks, would be plenty to hold them over for now. And so it was decided. They should build a storage shed. Thelly, doing all the heavy lifting in house, decided to also build a storage house because her husband was still off country. I am gonna open a few screens. All right, so Marion found some honey and blueberries in the bushes. Which was very good for the diversity of food that they so desperately needed. Trout, roots, blueberries, mushrooms and now honey. They almost had the complete disc of five. That's a Dutch reference to the health discs that we use in our system. Ah, never mind. Anyways, um, yes. After having laid the foundation, Thelly decided to also build the storage shed, because once again, her husband was definitely not suited for physical labor. The reserve of food was low again, as they decided they needed a meal before carrying on. Fuel was also becoming an issue, but luckily, luckily the storage shed was almost Almost finishing the building, she decided she needed a rest because her husband was not helping her. It is so difficult to actually work hard, do hard physical labor on your own. But building the storage shed was not enough, no. Thelly had to work as a woodcutter again and again just to keep up with the firewood demand for this winter. Her husband, clearly realizing that he was not pulling his weight, decided to start chopping down some, uh, some trees just to help her getting some firewood. 
so it was decided. He would chop down some logs. He would do hard physical labor to support his wife. And Sally nodded in agreement. Finally, she thought, he is doing something useful. He was being a no good husband. Alright, he can catch fish, but that's just sitting around and throwing a hook and sinker into the water and just waiting. Now he was actually doing physical labor, the lazy bastard. Still on their first tools that they have been sent out with. Luckily, they were made of sturdy stuff. Yes, slowly but surely, it all came together now. More trees were cut. So Sally could make more and more firewood. Because winters got cold here in the north. It was already minus 8 degrees Celsius. It's not Fahrenheit, thank goodness. Um... But Marion, although he did promise to chop down those trees, took frequent, very frequent breaks. He even almost dropped a tree on Thelly's head. What was he thinking? No, Thelly did not like Marion. And although they were now husband and wife, it was only out of necessity because there was no one. After having chopped down some trees, Marion decided to go back into the forest where he could, in quotation marks, gather useful supplies and food, probably catching a lot of Z's in the meantime. Another thing that was important to do was to get rid of their bag. They would stuff their bag in the stock shed. Just so it would be convenient for them. They were thinking about making a road, perhaps. To make walking faster. A road to the water. So they could... Well, to the creek, actually. So that they could easier fish for stuff. For food. For now, the firewood was slowly accumulating. And wow, look at this. Sally already chopped 64 logs. After having chopped so much, she decided to help unpack the bag and move it to the newly found storage chest. Yes, she had to do everything by herself, she thought at this point. Why is my husband going off into the forest and just sleeping? It was so frustrating for her. Luckily, she was not one to sulk, and she quickly got, got back to the job at hand. Now, firewood was slowly being gathered, and at some point, the chopping block would become redundant. Now, they decided to go hunting together, or gather together, because she missed him. I mean, he was a terrible man. He was actually a no-good man, but she missed him. I mean, yes, they were married out of necessity, but he could also be nice. He was a charming man, good with words, has a, had a warm, soft touch. After finishing this road, which constituted more heavy labor, she decided enough is enough. No more hard labor. I'll join my husband in the gatherer shelter. And like this, they gathered and gathered and gathered. Hoping to get enough food to last the winter. It seemed like things were going well. They had they still had some blueberries and roots in their, in their homes. But the forests kind of felt empty. They were... Well, there wasn't a firewood, of course. So they weren't... Spo uh, they weren't worried about heat, but food, no. There was not enough food in these forests. It was very depressing to notice that most of the stuff had already been gathered. 
they could just find firewood and more firewood and even more firewood but not any more food this made them decide to start fishing again because that was important also a local maybe they could go hunting for a bit they were so hungry that they decided to abandon the gatherer shelter and start hunting to get some meat and maybe even maybe even roast the meat so they could get roasted venison and yes they did get venison the deer the local deer really helped them out Getting that venison there really helped their food supplies. And they decided to roast some. So they could have more nutritious food. Meanwhile, on, her, on his 20th birthday, a child was called, born. Called Belly. The first child born into banishment. Yes, Belly loved Mary and so. But this meant more food streams. How would they ever cope? Could this possibly, could this be actually possible? The deer had already moved on, so they couldn't gather more from that local, local, local flock. So another road had to be built, so that they could fish, fish more. A proper fishing pier was put in place, or so they thought. Alas. The creek was not deep enough to support it. This is very frustrating. Oh, but it was. It was. They just hadn't paid it paid enough attention. So they needed a few logs and maybe even built a small shed here. And that way they could get some fish. Fish in. Fish in? No? Sorry. Yes, the fishing pier was done. Time to produce some fish. Or at least gather some. While the reindeer returned, they decided, no, we need fish. Proper salmon. Trout was getting old. Are we roasting venison? No, we are not. Alright. Well, in that case... We should gather some more. We should finish this road. To gather some more food and fuel. Well, fuel was getting low again. But there was still plenty stocked in their house. It seems like Marion actually had a knack for fishing. Already after having built this fishing pier for just a little while he was fishing like he was fishing forever very experienced in the meantime in the hopes that some of the fruits and nuts and berries had regrown Thelly decided to venture into the forest again and gather more materials this went on for about another year as thing as they try to stabilize their town. Belly, still a child, just running a mutter, eating food, pooping in diapers, doing not not a lot of useful stuff. Um, <laughs> well, that's what children do, right? 
She is, however, very big for a zero-year-old. Look at her. You're zero. Oh, hunger was slowly setting in again. Which was definitely not good. Yes, well, some of the mushrooms and honey had regrown. And salmon was abundant in these areas. It was still difficult to find a proper food supply. It was already July. And they were fearing that the next winter would be very harsh. The venison held them over for just a few months before having the trouble of not having any deer. So yes, hunger struck Thali as she gathered and she died. Thali died of starvation. This would surely be the end of this town. Unfortunately, it is. I'm afraid that this Iron Man mod is really making it freaking hard <laughs> for two people to survive. <laughs> right. What I will do for the next episode is I will try again from the last save and see if I can pick up somewhere close to where we are now. I am not completely sure that I will carry on with this descriptive version of Banished. If you like it, please let me know. But I will try to get some proper stuff done next episode. This is hard, people. Give me a few attempts to master this Iron Man anime you started. It will be difficult. It is already difficult. And it will be even more difficult. So food going to be a constant struggle. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want me to struggle less and want to see a four-person start, fine. Let me know. For now, I'm going to try to redo this bit up until about this time, just before Thelly died. Oh gosh, Thelly. Working so incredibly hard. And then dying. It must it must have been the exertion. I'm sure of it. That's why she was hungry. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you again next week. Thank you for watching. Bye.